Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I will modify the failed first configuration of my brand spanking new LSA. All the numbers required to do this swiftly are determined in part 4. There I also prepared this schematic with the coordinates of all the points that I need to change. Let's begin by changing the Y value of the right wingtip to 15.505 feet. Let's repeat for the left wingtip. Since the elevation of these points did not change, the dihedral is no longer 5 degrees. We must fix this. Let's set the chord point of the two wingtips to 0. Then we go to the YZ plane and rotate both wingtips 5 degrees as we did in part 1 of the video series. Now let's move the tail unit's root cord apex point from its current x value of 10 feet to 13.47 feet. We do this by first selecting the tail unit. Then we select the move point tool and enter 3.47 feet as a delta x translation. And then we extend each tape airfoil of the horizontal tail to 5.805 feet. This will be our stabilizer. Then let's select the trailing edge points of the stabilizer and move it to x equals 15.89 feet. We must also move the leading edge points of the stabilizer to 14.92 feet. Now let's fix the vertical tail. I am also going to create the rudder. To do this I go to the plane of symmetry, the xc plane, and add trailing edge points for the root and tip of the rudder. Then I select the now three tip points and move them all to Z equals 3.981. See, here I'm going to transpose 9 and 8 and show you later how to correct it. Let's place the trailing edge point for the root cord at its correct X value, 17.61 feet. Then let's place the same point for the tip cord at 19.22 feet. Let's correct the other two points of the vertical tail. This one goes to 17.98 and this one goes to 16.73 feet. To create the rudder I position myself conveniently in the three-dimensional view. I select the poly vector tool and drag vectors to form the rudder's root, trailing edge and tip. Note that the tip must be flipped. Then let's stitch a surface to these, noting that we must start at the upper vector. Remember the A1, A2 and B1, B2 scheme. Enter name, rudder. I want three cordwise and six spanwise panels, which is already entered, so I go to the Edge Deflections tab. There I select all three cordwise panels for deflection. A side benefit of defining control surfaces this way is that I can extract hinge moments. Next go to the reference tab and set up rudder functionality. Now I'm going to redefine the number of cordwise panels for the horizontal stabilizer and fin. I want to do this to keep the number of panels down while I'm working on the model. This will speed up solution. Then when the model is ready I'll increase it and those solutions will be the ones that I put in my design report. The number of panels can be changed for all three surfaces simultaneously by selecting them. Then go to the Change Surface Properties tool and enter 4 for cordwise panels. Note that blank text boxes in this form are properties that will not, I repeat, that will not be changed. 
Next, let's create the elevator. Let's go to the XY plane and drop three points to represent the elevator's trailing edge. Note how I drop them a bit from the plane. This is because I want to give them a precise X position and want to be able to select them all without selecting other geometry. First, ensure the Y position of the right horizontal tip is positive 5.805 feet. Repeat for the left tip as negative 5.805 feet. Then select all three points. I'm going to take a closer look in three-dimensional space. Change X ordinate to 17.10 feet. Alrighty, let's select the poly vector tool and drag vectors from the left tip, trailing edge and right tip. Flip the last vector. Finally, we must draw a vector from the center stabilizer trailing edge to the center elevator trailing edge. Pick the insert surface tool and stitch a left elevator. Change the name to left elev. The number of cordwise and spanwise panels is correct. So let's go to the edge deflections tab and confirm the three panels are selected. Then go to the reference tab and establish elevator functionality. Then press the OK button. Uh oh, I think I'm going to change the elevator color to solid blue. I find it helpful to use a different color for the control surfaces as this makes their definition more clear. Repeat for the right elevator. Change name to right elev and set the same elevator functionality as we did for the left elevator. Also let me do this for the rudder. Additionally I want to change the name of the previous surfaces to left and right stab. Yes I must not forget to turn off the elevator setup on the surface, it is still active. I'll have to do the same for the left stabilizer. This is a good time to copy and paste the right stabilizer properties onto the left one. Next, let's make sure all the horizontal tip points are but a hair off the XY plane to avoid that pesky piercing vortex error like we did in part 2. What still remains is to ensure the main wing is properly sized. We have only completed the span increase fix. Now let's fix the wing cords. That's a pretty simple task. Select the trailing edge points at the tip and change the x-ordinate to 4.354 feet. Then let's change the root cord trailing edge point to 5.590 feet. That's pretty much it. This is what the new second generation model looks like. Let's compare this second version to the first generation. I'm going to flash them for comparison. You can see how much larger the second version is compared to the first one. The mannequin is 6 feet tall. When one flashes existing LSAs, such as the Cessna Skycatcher and the Flight Design CTLSA, it is evident that the second version is far closer to real aircraft in this class than the first one. This shows you how surfaces can push you toward more realistic design. Of course you can see that version 2 is probably a little bit too big. Its wing area of 140 square feet beats the Cessna by 20 square feet. This will increase wing weight and drag, so there is benefit in pursuing a smaller wing. But first, I have to evaluate this geometry to fully understand its shortcomings. Anyway, there are a few more tasks that need to get done. These are listed here. Since you've already seen how to accomplish them in parts 1 and 2 of this video series, I'm just going to list them to save viewing time. Pause to jot them down. These should not require more than 10 minutes for a beginning user to accomplish. Once you're done, come back, because I want to show you how to create ailerons. Okay, let's add ailerons. To do this, I am first going to split the wing surface. Select the XY plane and adjust the zoom to show both wings. Select the right wing surface. I plan to feature aileron on the outboard 5 feet of the wing. I select the modify split surface tool. I check to make sure the XZ plane is selected because the cut will be made parallel to it. The split must take place at positive 10 feet out. The tool displays the cutting plane. Press OK. Select the left wing surface. 
then open the split surface tool again now enter minus 10 see the cutting plane in the correct spot press OK I am going to take this one step further and split the wing some two feet on either side of the plane of symmetry in anticipation of a fuselage I repeat the split as I did before Now I go to the three-dimensional view and select the new outboard wing surfaces because I want to change the color to solid blue as well. When surfaces split the surface for me, it created an interpolated airfoil mean line based on the current airfoils. This airfoil is stored as a point list and is a temporary placeholder for an actual airfoil. It is expected you change this to an actual airfoil sometime in future. I am going to do this right now by first copying and pasting the root airfoil onto the fuselage side airfoils and then I do the same for the tip airfoil I copy paste them onto the inboard aileron wing station then I convert the original airfoil back into a vector because there really isn't an actual airfoil there when this region will be inside a fuselage of course this changes the airfoil definition for the airplane a little bit I now have a NACA 4415 at the fuselage side, morphing into a NACA 4412 at the inboard's aileron station. That airfoil remains constant to the wingtip. Right now, this is moot. Trust me, if the airplane displays unfavorable characteristics with this setup, it will do so too with other airfoils. Real designers don't let such things stop them from moving forward with the design. We still have plenty of work to do, and among multiple future tasks will be to formally select final airfoils. Now let's introduce aileron functionality. Select the left outboard wing, add OB to the name. Remember that it is not necessary to name surfaces, however it can come in handy at times. Go to the Edge Deflections tab. Here I'm going to pick three trailing edge panels as aileron. Go to the Reference tab and turn on Roll Control and select the standard deflection applies option press OK select the right wing tip and repeat this for it except select the inverse deflection applies option press OK then just for the heck of it let's rename the inboard wing surfaces appropriately let's do the same thing with the part of the wing that will reside inside the fuselage At this juncture, let's save this work. I had saved the first version as model 00. I'm going to save this model as model 01. Then, if I do something terrible and irreversible in future, I know I will not have to start my work further back than this model. If you don't already, you should adapt similar approach to your work, regardless of the software you are using. Now we're getting to the end of this video. I want to do two things before we end and will take three minutes to do so. First I want to run the model to confirm there are no bugs in it. Let's do this. Open the VLM console and press solve. There you have it. It solves just fine. Second, remember the erroneous value I entered for the vertical tail. Let me show you how you might discover it serendipitously. Here we are looking at the horizontal tail area in math object SHT. Remember this value was supposed to be 33.7 square feet, but it's not. By clicking on it, the surfaces being used for it are highlighted. Only two surfaces are highlighted. We have yet to tell surfaces that the elevators are also a part of the horizontal tail area. Let's fix this. Double click on the math object. Press the advanced button. Place the cursor next to the number 4 which refers to surface number 4. Press the pick surface ID and pick the two elevators. Remember that a comma must be placed between all surface IDs. Press OK. This begs the question, didn't we also forget to update the vertical tail area? Yes we did. Check out the math object SVT. Only the fin is highlighted. Let's fix this too. Place the cursor next to the ID 5 Press the pick surface ID and select the rudder. Press OK. 
This number was supposed to be 13.2 square feet, but it is 12.9. This might spur some curiosity to investigate. Let's check the points. Moving around, we see that the tail is a hair shorter than intended. 3.891 rather than 3.981. So select the tip points and re-enter the z-values. Now we see the updated area is indeed 13.2 square feet. Alright, in the next video I will run this model through a set of aerodynamic tests to compare it to the first version. Have we made any improvements? Are there further improvements to be made? We should definitely be able to obtain some answers to those questions. As usual, please consider giving this video a thumbs up rating on YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you can be notified of future videos that give various design tips to aspiring aircraft designers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.